Welcome to Survivor NSFW. I'm Zach Hacker, and it is my pleasure to bring you some really special coverage tonight. We have the Survivor Pearl Islands reunion. Uh, tonight, I'm joined by Burton, Savage, Trish, and Johnny Fairplay, and we'll see who else pops in. Uh, and if you want to check out the video of this, I suggest you go to youtube.com slash Survivor NSFW and see how well everyone has aged since 17 years ago, Pearl Islands was on the air. That is incredible. How are you guys? We're good. I think right. Trish, win, uh, Trish wins that, actually. She looks wonderful. Oh, I think so, you. too. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and, and, and Trish's husband, Leo. Have, have you, did you guys see him pop in earlier? Oh, my yes. God. <laughs> like, the, the guy looks like he's 29. I'd, I'd do him. <laughs> <laughs> well, to get us started here, I'm going to pull up. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my go. God. All right. We've got your original cast photo, I believe. Well, you guys tell me, where was this taken? It was on Miami. the beach in, my, in, in Miami, I think. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, All we're, right. We, we're one of the only casts that didn't have their cast photo taken on location because they were planning on tricking us and, and, and fucking us from the jump. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They planned it. They did it. They executed very well. Yeah. So, Burton, what was going through your head when you were doing press on Miami Beach? That he needed a haircut. <laughs> well, that's for sure. I 100% needed a haircut, especially looking back. That should have been the after picture. <laughs> Man, I tell you, well, the weirdest thing, I think, is the, the days that we are in that hotel, you couldn't talk to each other. There was always an awkward moment kind of walking around. You could tell... You start seeing and recognizing people. You're immediately trying to size people up. And then it was just it was just a long period of awkwardness. You couldn't talk to any people really outside of the hotel. You couldn't talk to anyone inside the hotel. And it was just, it was a bit of a mind, you know, and kind of a, just messing with your mind. Um, but man, I, I didn't, I, I hadn't watched that many until I got on it, got chosen. I hadn't really watched any of it. So um, I don't know. I, I was just, the whole thing was a shock to me in the beginning. All right. And Trish, were you totally stumped? Did you have any idea that there was something fishy going on there? No, I mean, I think to Burton's point, I knew that we were going to be, I'm talking about the finals, um, when we couldn't see anybody, we didn't know anybody. And I just knew that it was going to be 16 days that we were going to be at the finals. And the longer I was there, the better chance I had to making it. And then when, um, I think to Burton's point, when we were in Miami, I don't know about these guys, but I had no idea how long we were going to be there. I didn't know if we were going to be there a week or a day or what was going to happen. And um, you were pretty much stuck in your room is what I remember until we went down um, to like a little gathering with Mark Burnett and Jeff. And Mark kind of said to us, you know, I think it was the next day you guys are going to get on a, sh on a flight to we didn't know where and you were going to get on a ship. And I think from the very beginning, you had to just wrap your arms around the fact that you weren't going to know what was going to happen to you. You just didn't, you know, yeah. and that was part of the fun and part of the adventure for me. Had you seen a lot of survivor before you went out there? Yeah, I was um, a big fan. You know, my neighborhood, uh, I was saying to these guys, uh, we have twin girls and they were nine. Um, and I had tried out twice before. So for two years, I tried to get on and our neighborhood were big Survivor fans. We would go to each other's houses. We would have dinner. And so um, twice before I didn't get on and the whole neighborhood knew and everyone knew I didn't make it. So when I made it this last time, nobody knew because, you know, once you make it, you're not allowed to say anything. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And then Savage, did you have any idea that they were going to just drop you off there and start the game? No. So what I remember is, uh, to be completely honest, uh, here's the fun part about Survivor. It was game on from casting to arriving in Miami. You're not allowed to talk, but it's all eye contact, body, uh, reading body motions and figuring out who you think you can align with. So right from the time that we hit that beach in Miami to when we're in the nasty airport, we can't talk and everyone's looking at luggage, wondering people's names and everything. It's full on game on. And then, so that's the beauty of Survivor. So uh, it, it, it just ramps up so you can't talk, but everyone 
is so ultra competitive as they should be, right? That's the beauty of the show. And I'm just looking at fair play, trying to figure out, is he a dickhead? Can I work with him? Look at Burden. He looks like a stud. Looking at Trish, he seems wonderful. And you're just trying to size people. You look at Bert, at Rupert, he looks like this modern day pirate. And what's he all about? And uh, and it was absolutely game on. And and so you uh, know, I was seeing Austin's arms. Yeah. Like, what in the world? Austin shows up. He's this beast <laughs> of a, a just a physical specimen, and you're wondering what his deal is. And it was just super fun, right? And this is back. You, in context, you have to remember, this is back in the early days of Survivor when it was massive and there wasn't all the hidden immunity idols and it was all kind of a pure game, which is something very special in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And just we're just, we, all of us have died to get on the show and it's a venture of a lifetime and we're just chomping at the bit to start, but we don't want to make any missteps and we want to absolutely maximize when we hit that beach that we've made the eye contact, we, we nodded the head and did the winks and all that jazz. And it was, you know, to Trisha's point, it's venture of a lifetime. And we were just absorbing every single bit of it. It was spectacular. Well, and also, I think to your point, uh, like a sense of innocence, that can, it can never be duplicated. Yeah. 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 And a no, sense of naivety. You know, yeah. uh, lambs to the slaughter, so to speak. And yeah. it was this this impending kind of how tough is this going to be? And we'll get into this. But then when we hit when we hit the beach in uh, Pearl Islands, and I look around, and and I'm the oldest guy. Um, and 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 to Trisha's point, when we met with Burnett and Prokes, they said to us, "You need to understand that this is probably going to be the most physically challenging season of Survivor, and it's only season mm -hmm. seven." Uh, and I just looked around and I thought, oh my goodness, like we're going to get our butts kicked. And this is, you know, this is going to be epic. It's what we signed up for. But that unknown that makes you a little uneasy, but also just like, oh my, this is what we signed up for. We're all adventure seekers and it's going to be amazing. You know, the one thing I also remember, I don't know if you guys remember this during that meeting with Mark and Jeff was, Je Mark said two things I'll always for remember. A, it'll be the adventure of the lifetime, but also he said, there are 16 of you out of 355,000 applicants, and we chose 16 people, and we have developed this multi-million dollar game based on your strengths and your weaknesses. So every challenge that we've put together, we've looked at each individual person to determine how are they going to do in that particular challenge? What are they going to do in that particular challenge? What are the personalities that have come together? And so, you know, he said, we have built a multi-million dollar TV show around the 16 of you. And I remember thinking, wow, you know, that's, that's an investment that they put on the 16 of us. And I just remember thinking, wow, this is really big. They, yeah. they, they should have done a little more R and D on uh Dara's wrist for the, uh, the challenge with the canteen and the oh, water. Just, you'll uh, never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there. Uh, Johnny, Johnny <laughs> Fairplay might've won that. one fucking immunity. <laughs> uh, so, so, so for, for me looking back at Miami, uh, I would, you know, we still had our cell phones before we left for Panama. And so my, some of my last conversations were with Thunder D who came out and did the, the dead grandma lie with me. And, uh, and, 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 you know, and I was, you know, taking notes about the people, uh, Trish was like, so I had, I had given my, I had never seen the show before I, before I was cast, but before I, you know, went to the double tree. And, uh, so um, I'm watching all the episodes there, you know, during the 11 days of casting there and, th and then subsequently following up, you know, just give myself a crash course on Survivor. I made it, you know, all the way through before the time we left. So one of my favorite players going in was T-Bird. And so I saw Trish as my T-Bird. So I, I, I told Thunder D, I was just like, I got a T-Bird. He goes, that's a good move. T-Bird's a safe bet. Uh, Burton, I uh, was was not on my my good list. 
<laughs> the, 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 real fair play. The the the, the khakis and, and 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 blue button down. I was just like, I don't. I think he's going to be too straight laced for me. But Andrew Savage, honestly, I I saw a uh, I, I saw our version of Hunter Ellis, who wow. which which I was like, if this guy has just a little bit of sleaze, this is my guy. <laughs> this is the guy I'm working with right here. And and then Rupert, I was just like, there's this mullet head that, you know, and, and, and Thunder D's like, send him up first. <laughs> so, I love that, man. I love that. So, I, I, but I, you, you, you were in my zone, Savage. And then when he does the try breakdown, I was like, well, there's my enemy. <laughs> I mean, like, because. Oh, right. That's fascinating, if, right? They if you're, if you're good with- enough for me to want to work with you, that means you're good enough that, that you're going to be a problem if I'm going against you. Exactly. I just want to comment about Burton. So we were in casting, a lot of casting, and I saw he had a Kellogg T-shirt on. And Kellogg is one of the best B schools, business schools in the country at Northwestern. In the and and so I, you know, living in Chicago, I knew that, and I saw that, and I made a mental note. Dude's obviously super smart. You don't get into Kellogg unless you're a brainiac. And then I see him uh, that he made the show, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to play that, you know, to my advantage later, knowing that. Not only is he super physically fit, but he's got he's got a, a incredible brain to back it up. Well, and I remember, and at one point you mentioned something about that. It's like, oh shit! I'm like, okay. <laughs> Bert, I thought I was like putting Bert, it on. You told me, remember that it was at the merge. You told me, Savage, please. I'm trying not to keep it down. Yeah. That. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris is asking me if I even went to college. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what <laughs> yeah, but Chris, Chris asked me. She was just like, "Because I'm not sure." He, I'm like, "I'm pretty sure he he went, uh, Chris." But Bur- Burton's game was blown up. Just at, like every possible opportunity for Burton's game to be blown up outside of his own course, you know. So you know, you're you have the Kellogg School of Business. Me and Burton got pulled aside after a challenge for I like it was somewhat early in the game and Mark Burnett's talking to me and Burton and uh, Mark goes, he goes, if you, you know, you think this is tough, but that's nothing compared when you were on eco challenge with me. Remember eco challenge? You were there on eco and Burton's like, shut the fuck up. Exactly. <laughs> and you're blowing my cover, dude. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> he did do that. Full on. <laughs> So fast forwarding a little bit to where Johnny was bringing up dividing the tribes, you guys started the season with, I think, the most epic start to a season Survivor's ever done, and I don't know if they'll ever replicate it. With not only are you stranded for the first time ever at a time when they kept trying to get more intense every season, with the clothes on your back, with nothing to start with, you get the marooning, and then you start off in this Panamanian village. Um, I have to ask you guys about the experience, because this is one of my favorite scenes in the history of Survivor. I'll go first. Can I go yeah, first? Please do. Please. <laughs> All right. So we had no Spanish speaking people in the Morgans and they had Sandra. So yeah. Just keep, keeping it real. <laughs> they got order and, and kudos to the, to the Drakes order of magnitude, more supplies in us because to be honest, we were dumbasses, and we didn't speak Spanish and, and we didn't negotiate very well. Uh, but that was the first thing that, uh, that when I went to the Drake tribe, when we finally won a challenge and saw what they had, it was a Shangri-La compared to the ghetto, which was the Morgan Island. <laughs> uh, Jenny Craig Island, as we affectionately refer to Jenny it as. Craig Island. <laughs> Accurately described, yeah. yeah. So, I, I actually, Savage, I have a question. So when we go to the beach, you know, the, the Drakes have a game plan. You know, we have 100 Panamanian dollars. So I, Burton, I believe you you go to the to the to the boat to see uh, like there's there's three boats to choose from and you negotiate the best price possible, right? Yeah. How much do we have to have left over? Let's spend the rest. Yeah. So so how how much was the boat? Because I've always wanted to know that. Uh, why are you Jesus? Uh, <laughs> hey, you want to kill off? Come on, dude. Can you remember? Twenty bucks. <laughs> 20 bucks, 20 okay, bucks. Okay, let's, let's just say, let's just, but, 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 but what, weren't they different prices for the three boats? Yeah, I mean, from what I remember, and I, yeah. I did watch, I, I maybe watched our season 10 or so years ago, and I, I rewatched it just a couple months ago, the first half of it, and it's, I mean, it's hilarious watching. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I feel like I talked to the three, got a decent estimate on the price and said we need x amount to hold aside and then let's spend the rest yeah so so we have a hundred panty dollars 
Burton holds 20 because he knows that 20 will get us this boat. That's locked in. So we have 80 Panamanian dollars to spend. Now, rumor and innuendo, according to Rhino, who's not here to defend himself, so it's easy to throw him under the bus, and we will. Rhino tells me that you guys go back, go to Morgan Island with 40, oh, 40 $50 in, 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 uh, in, in preparation of a return visit to, uh, to the Panamania village. Is it, <laughs> what, when, when, I when, think he told, I think he told me that. Yes. Yeah. So Savage, when, when I, was I, I can tell you, uh, I have no recollection. It's probably true. <laughs> I, I would say that Rhino was our burden in terms of go uh, figure out how much the boat costs. And you saw that clip in the actual show <laughs> where he says, "He didn't know the map. I have no idea. And <laughs> where are you going? Like, where do you want to go? And he's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So he's like, Island. I mean, can't give you a price. So, I, so that's fair because the twists and turns, we had no idea. We're a bunch of knuckleheads not knowing what we're doing. Probably had, uh, 40 bucks in our pocket that could have been spent <laughs> on lentils and rice like you guys. And, and probably true. Well, so, but if you guys had gone back to the Panamanian village, you would have, you would have schooled us because we used all of our money. That should have been the twist. <laughs> the should, there's the twist. <laughs> well, Andrew, let me well, ask you this. Especially since Jeff said very clearly, you will not be coming back here. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's a liar. Come on, <laughs> huh? Ropes is not truthful. <laughs> I said that for years. <laughs> <laughs> outwit, outlast, outplay. Once your torch is snuffed, you're out of the game. Come on. Outplay. Yeah, <laughs> he said that. Well, Look at Burton. The entire fabric of the show. <laughs> you can't trust that dude. And he's a very yeah. good friend of mine. I love him like a brother. But honestly. So, Savage, what about – Well, I read every single rule of the game, and it was like 20-something pages of legal yeah. stuff. And there was definitely a rule that you cannot steal personal items from other people, right? And then the last rule is every rule is up to the discretion of the producers. Yes. So when Rupert was stealing y'all stuff, I was like, dude, 100%, that's not in the rules. And he, and yeah, I mean, I love, I love you. To the producers. Loved you pointed that out. Obviously, I'm a lawyer. So what interesting, who's interesting about for me as a lawyer? Uh, about Panama is in Panama on a Panamanian law, you're guilty until proven innocent. Really interesting, right? Not in America, innocent to proven guilty. Yeah. So by Rupert stealing my inserts and other stuff, he's guilty. So if you, to your point, Burton, you read the rules, you cannot violate local law or else you're immediately ejected from the game. From the first day, go. Rupert's out. Imagine, not that I wanted him out, I actually did, but that's <laughs> I, I didn't have a problem with that. <laughs> Imagine if the producers honored their code and, and, and said, sorry, dude, you stole, you're out. And Rupert is gone. Crazy twist of the game. But, you know. But, well, you know, even, if, even if he wasn't out, if they stepped in and said, listen, put that back. You're not allowed to steal it. We're going to cut this out. But no stealing personal stuff, right? Because yeah. I went back and he said, I stole all your stuff. I was like, that's not legal. 100%. Pirates pillage. Yeah, pirates pillage. <laughs> like, well, we're not really pirates. It's a but, thing. Uh, uh, Rupert definitely thought he was a pirate. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what amazes former, me too is this is pre life. Pirates of the Caribbean, and this is this character is yeah. just emerging, crystallized yeah. there on the screen. And yeah, that, that's the crazy thing. Like when Thunder D comes out for the the Dead Grandma Lie, you know, like I, I'm just like the the number one hit of the summer was supposed to be The Incredible Hulk with Burton Eric Eric Bana, and, and or actually was uh, was that the other uh, Hulk? Was that the one with uh, Ed Norton? Anyway, The Incredible Hulk was supposed to be the smash summer blockbuster it was a bomb it was an epic fail and thunder d shows up and he's just like is this shit pirate themed and i'm like yeah why and he goes pirates of the caribbean might be the biggest movie in the history of movies and i'm like what he goes oh yeah he goes this season's gonna be huge dude you have no clue and i'm like well, there's this motherfucker that th thought he was a pirate <laughs> he's <laughs> like that's gonna play great <laughs> it did it did. It did. The timing was in impeccable. impeccable. I mean, like they, 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 they caught lightning in a bottle with the character of Rupert on Pearl Islands. 
hundred percent. I think lightning the bottle in terms of the theme it was brilliant. Uh, absolutely. Edit, positive, positive editing. Very oh, positive. Yeah. Very, very more. positive editing. So, so, so how much were your inserts that, that Rupert stole that, that I actually took and traded? 400 bucks. 400 bucks. In, in wow. Bucks. Uh, it would have been nice to have. Me, like, guess who paid me back for those? Who? No one. No one. Yeah. Well, call yeah. Rupert got a million dollars for nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he still has it. I'm sure. <laughs> Where's in the bed at night? No doubt. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> creepy. Uh, well, yeah. one other moment in that village, Trish, you had quite a uh, sense feeling <laughs> moment with your lovely eyes. <laughs> uh, how, what was well, that like watching that playback? It, I, you know, I thought that was funny because obviously, as, as Sandra pointed out correctly, I had no clue. But I think Sandra blew it up. I mean, it really wasn't like that. We went in. I think it was like that. I, I think it was like it. that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think Trish likes it. to th think it wasn't. <laughs> Trish, she had that quick that. inner eye, which was kind of cool. And I, I think it was that way, to be completely honest. Yeah. Do you really think so? No, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I don't know, but it didn't feel that way. Put it that way. But to me, going in that little area or shop or whatever it was called, I had my eye on the tarp. That's all I wanted was that tarp. So when she started complimenting me on my eyes, my thought process was, sure, like, I'll buddy up to you, you know, no problem. I'll play <laughs> along. And yeah, I mean, you know, I, clearly... I've got blue eyes in the Panamanian world. Not many people have blue eyes. And so my thought was, how cheap can I get that tarp over there? Because I knew we needed that tarp. So I played up that little exchange with her. Again, not thinking it was anything other than a compliment. But my thought really was, I want to get that tarp for as cheap as possible. Because we, at that point, remember, we didn't have a whole lot of money left. It was sort of toward the end of our time. And so when I watched the playback and Sandra was so, you know, clear about that, <laughs> that woman coming on to me, I was like, that's crazy. I was just trying to get the tarp. So, yeah. Hey, whatever it takes, use your assets. Get yeah. that tarp. <laughs> Uh, Burton, Burton, well, I don't know if I, I don't know if you remember this. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that that Trish does. All right. So as soon as we get to the village, uh, the, one of the first tables we go to, they have lighters, and so I, I, I was like, I was like, how many lighters do you have? They're like, we have five lighters. I'm like, I want all five. I don't want them to get any. I want, I want all five of your lighters. So I buy all five lighters, and I'm like, uh, how many? Uh, and they had toothbrushes. I was like, how many yeah. toothbrushes do you have? And they're like, we have four Not enough. Enough. They had four. And I was, I, was like, I was like, I want all four toothbrushes. I don't want them to have any. So that, that's one yeah. of the first items that we Very buy. Selfish, man. Very selfish. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Smart. Smart. So, so fast forward to, uh, so we, we get to the, once we get to the island, you know, we're, we're sizing everyone up. And so we have these four toothbrushes. It's eight of us. So I know exactly where this is going. We each pick a partner. I'm about, I pick, to, I'm about to throw up in my mouth. <laughs> you should. <laughs> so, so, so we have like a blue toothbrush, a yellow, a green, and, and, a, and a whatever. You know, we have four different color toothbrushes. So I see Trish. I'm just like, okay, this is a beautiful woman. I think she looks like she comes from some money. So she probably takes care of her teeth. This is who I want to share. Hey! hey the queen! Hi, hey. Hi queen! What's up, queenie? My phone, I had to run and get a charger and then turn it back up. I didn't realize that my phone was dead. This is, this is, this is what they call double millionaire problems, guys. We, don't, we, don't, yeah. we have no idea. I have nice <laughs> resource charge, issues. So. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm telling this story, uh, Sandra. So we get that we get the four toothbrushes. So I, I, I pick Trish as my toothbrush buddy. Okay. It's, it's oh, eight I of us. We, 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 we each. Okay, so you pick Krista. Uh, did, I'm guessing Burton, you picked Michelle. I, I picked know. anybody but Rupert. Chris didn't brush your teeth, so I was lucky. <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, so we had the four toothbrushes and I'm just like, okay, this is a cool deal. So on day two, I see Rupert with a toothbrush that is not his, but is also not mine and Trish's. 
And I'm like, Rupert, I'm out. what are you doing? And he goes, I'm brushing my teeth. And I'm like, but that's not your toothbrush. We each have a toothbrush that we're sharing with one other person. And he goes, oh, I just pick one willy nilly. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, well, done with the toothbrushes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. No more toothbrushes. Use a different one every day until it used them all. That's a great story, man. <laughs> These are the, the uh, elements of Survivor that are so amazing because they never hit the airwaves. That's yeah. incredible. I did, I've never heard that before. Oh, so, so uh, Zach was asking us, Sandra, about, about the Panamanian village and, and, and you <laughs> pimping out Trish. Because <laughs> she had those beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> she 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 doesn't think that that's where the where the lady was going with that. What, what you were there? What do you think? I think the lady was a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, I totally agree. I was standing right there. There was yeah. a twinkle in her eye. She liked Trish in a sexual way. <laughs> <laughs> but you you okay. that wasn't that wasn't for the camera. You really feel that way, right? Yeah, no, for real. Like, she was really, like, it was all about Trish, about how beautiful she was, her beautiful blue eyes. And she, Trish, she liked you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not, not that there's anything wrong with that. That's no. Cool. All I really cared about was getting the tarp. I, I didn't see that or feel that at all. But, hey, Savage, you know what I've always wanted to kind of ask you? Yeah. Were you there when T was arguing with the woman about t getting her money back? Were you there yes. during that I was scene? Standing right, I was standing right there. What happened? What, cause she, because I was there. I, but again, I was over by the tarp when that happened. And I looked over and I saw her standing in the doorway yelling at the woman who, who was the same woman Sandra was talking about, who was nice to me. And I remember thinking... Wow, that woman was so nice. What what's going on with the other team? I didn't quite understand. Yeah, what happened is uh, that woman didn't think T was as attractive as you. Oh took, yeah, uh, no took, took yeah Tawana doesn't have blue eyes. No, she doesn't. <laughs> took T's money back, uh -huh. and, and 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 it was uh, it was not fair. If you if you look at the clip again, I'm like, no, actually, we paid for this, and I have my hand on the pot. Oh. I'm trying to be gentle, like. You know that's ours. We paid for it, and it was it, it was uh, ugly. It was ugly, but honestly, justice was on our side. Right. Teeth, nothing wrong, and it was uh, it was kind of messed up. Yeah, yeah. It came off that way. I just, from my point of view, being across the room, I didn't quite get what what happened, and I, I didn't really trust the playback because T came off very. Um, you know, angry and rude. And to me, it just seemed like something was off there. And I, I wasn't really yeah. sure what it was. That's because there was, there was a, a, if you will, injustice. And look, I'm, I've traveled a lot of countries. The last thing you want to do is be that ugly American in a foreign country. But I was right there and I saw what yeah. happened. And, and the T was totally in the right. And yeah. T, you know, God bless her, is A type and she's going to stand up for what's right. And, and yeah. T was right. And at the end of the day, we got the pot and, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons I love that scene so much is that we get to see how the tribes work together really early on. We get, I mean, you can watch that scene and it's pretty much how the season plays out. Sandra doesn't come out as the leader, but she's the MVP at the end of the day in the village. Yeah, she um, And yeah, and you get the Morgans start off great and kind of fall apart as they're running around all over the village. Appreciate it's that. so good. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but, 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 but the village, you're right. The village is a metaphor for the entire season. Yeah. It, which is a point. Come on now. There's a language issue. There's a language barrier. Sandra, t talk to me, okay? You spoke the local language. If I don't speak a lick of Spanish, and I get it, we get into the village. Rhino says, dude, hang with me. I speak Spanish. We get into some little nook and cranny. He knows nothing. He doesn't speak Spanish. Hey, wait, 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 wait. So you had three college graduates that took college Spanish <laughs> and, and, <laughs> in the Morgan tribe. They were like, they we took Spanish, but not Spanish. They can't put a sentence together. And you go into the village and it's, brrr, give me all this, give me that. And you're negotiating and we're a bunch of idiots. So it's interesting to me. No, look, no sour grapes. I wouldn't change a thing, honestly, except I'd love to win, but that's okay. And I'd love to punch fair play in the nose. That's okay, too. 
So, uh, but I wouldn't change a thing. So, but when you go into the village in a foreign country and you have someone that, that speaks Spanish fluently and it's about communicating with locals and getting everything you possibly can, it's interesting to me from a producer standpoint, either they're a bunch of idiots or they knew what they were doing, right? And if they knew what they were doing, it's very interesting to set up the season to your point about this was a, a, a kind of a snapshot of how the season played out. It's fascinating to me to play that out from a producer standpoint, right? To inject that element into the game as opposed to, right? Sandra's, you know, God forbid you're not on the season. You're the best for sure, but keep everyone English speaking with no Spanish speaking skills. Yeah. The one thing I will say, though, that there were eight of us and Sandra wasn't with all eight of us the whole time. So, for instance, yeah. like Fair Play and I got the toothbrushes. And so, I mean, for sure, she was an asset, no doubt about it. But, you know, you have Rupert stealing your stuff. Sandra wasn't there for that. I mean, when Sandra was there, she was great. She negotiated. She got some stuff we probably wouldn't have gotten. But at the end of the day, she wasn't with all eight of us all the time. We all had to kind of figure out how to work with them and negotiate and do all that. But yeah, yeah. no, you're, you're right. You're right. And Sandra no, it, and I it, ended up on 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 the, uh, the 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 bad side of the village <laughs> before it was all said and done. We we Sandra and I ended up at the cockfighting, and Sandra <laughs> traded her uh, gold neck. Yeah, tell, tell them what all you got. I got well. It's on TV. The barbecue grill. We didn't get the grill because it didn't have wheels, but we got everything on the grill: the foil, the barbecue Chicken. sauce. We had every damn thing off that grill, but the grill itself. We had hot sauce. We had bottled waters. So they got they got mad about our bottled waters because we're yeah. sitting there. We're, they're they're just like, it. hey, they're they're like the wells. Are, we're like, we got bottled waters, motherfucker. We don't need a well. <laughs> and they took our bottled water. I ended up getting my gold chain back, so the production got it back for me. No kidding. Oh, that's nice. That's <laughs> that was, they couldn't get your insoles, but they they get her gold <laughs> necklace. Yeah. yeah, I was not a I was not a high ticket item. No insoles for me. Wow. I love wow. that they got it, back, got it back to you, Sandra. That's really, really cool. But yeah, we took a bottle of water. So it's interesting. They did that uh, because of the trademark. They couldn't. Yeah. They didn't want a mosaic and blur out all the trademarks and all that. Yeah. Plus, they also didn't want to think, God forbid, you know, we would have bottled water. You need to go to the well, get the water, boil, get all the parasites out of it, and the true survivor experience. Wait, Sandra, also, they, don't have to boil, they don't have to boil the water anymore, do they? No, no, no. The they, put the, they put the, uh, the the tablets in the wells now, kills oh, all the yeah. parasites. Because honestly, here's a, a point that's, that's fascinating, and, and you guys know, know this, is that people come back from Survivor in the old days of Survivor with all sorts of parasites in their system because yeah. of the, the inadequate uh, boiling and killing of the parasites. So they finally said, here's a genius idea. Let's put a tablet in the, in the well kill all the parasites so they don't have to they don't have to purify the water yeah, so, Le yeah. lex's like Lex, lex's life was exactly. torture for a year really? no, lex is a good, good friend of ours look he lex is amazing and yet no he really struggled for a long long time and, wow. and that's not okay right but but to, to fairness to the producers this is uh it's a learning process yeah. Right? yeah. Look at now versus then. This is old yeah. days survivor. They learned, you know what? We don't have to put them through so much pain. We can actually give them purified water without the audience knowing about it. And but it, it took, you know, like 20 seasons to do that. <laughs> right. And and how many parasites? I mean, it, yeah. it's So Sandra, we talked you... about Sorry, go ahead, Trish. I was just going to say Sandra, do you remember um filling your canteen with water and holding on to your canteen for dear life. Like you would have that canteen around your neck. And I think you've said to me, you know, your husband who's in the military, he, I think he said to you, if I'm not mistaken, water is going to be your life in the game and you make sure you keep your canteen filled and you keep your canteen with you. I remember early on, you mentioned that to me. Oh yeah. I've always held on to my canteen. Every <laughs> time I played it that's the thing but now um savage now you're you're right the water is different I don't know if they put tablets in it but they fill it with jugs of water every day yep so in Fresh Cambodia, water. 
Sandra in Cambodia, they told us tablets in the water. You don't have to worry about boiling it. And you could tell, you could taste a little bit of uh, kind of chlorine in the water. And I'm totally cool with that as long as it kills yeah. the parasites. And which is one of those evolutions of the game that it just, it makes sense. Like, yeah. why have to boil water for two hours to kill parasites? Well, I mean, back in the day, it was a true survival show. Now true. it's yeah. a yeah. Eco survival Eco aspect. It's almost completely gone. It's just strategy and the social side of it, not the survival side. Well, I don't know if there's strategy. I, I think, there, there's advantages now. <laughs> so that, Bert, that's totally fair. And I love your comment, old school kind of, you know, we can talk about this later, but they got away from kind of the, the, the foundation of Survivor was truly an adventure kind of eco-challenge yeah. show. And it's, it's a little poofy now in terms of fire tokens and, and not to just yeah. Sandra at all, but, you know, fire <laughs> tokens and all this hidden immunity idols. You know, I'm an old school player, always will be. Will be, that's cool. But uh, I know they need to evolve as a show. But there's an element that is is hits my sweet part, sweet spot, and, and just in terms of, I love, like the old school Survivor. It's it's mm -hmm. very pure. Well, and even you know just just taking the water in and of itself. I mean, you've got to get the water, you've got to get fire. When you have to keep the fire going, you have to boil the water, you have to cool the water. Just in and of itself, like that's like a half day activity for half the people. Exactly right. Yeah. So there's there's like just to live, you've yeah. got to do all of that. And, oh, and, 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 and the, the the pot that you you boiled it in would, would fall over. You oh would, yeah! I mean, like, like it, Rupert, anything. Rupert would Rupert would put his underwear in it and be like, "I'm just gonna clean my underwear." Dude, that's our favorite water pot. <laughs> yeah. His underwear. Yes. I remember that. So I would love to hear from Sandra because she's played multiple times. Uh, what her favorite kind of aspect or theme of Survivor is? Old school, not old school in terms of strategy, but bare bones, you get vir virtually no help from the producers versus now, which is tablets in the water, totally okay with that. Uh, fire tokens, hidden immunity idols, it gets really complicated. My, ma my brain kind of explodes when I watch it from a strategy standpoint, but I I'm curious, Sandra, to tell us, the queen, her take on that. Old school, old school, <laughs> old school. Yeah. Like there's just too many idols too many advantages and then i hate like the idol nullifier like if i have an idol yep. it should be good i shouldn't have to now worry about the idol nullifier you know it's just so many things that take away but they want this surprise i don't know but i definitely i've always said that pearl islands will always have the number one spot in my heart because back then we got to know the players hey what's your name what do you do uh where do you live how many kids you have where now it's just about you know, am I with the right voting block for just this one tribal council? And you really don't, you don't make the relationships that we did back in the day. Yeah. I totally agree. So Cambodia was great all-star season, warp speed in terms of strategy and stuff. But I, and I, and I tell the Morgans, uh, so the Drakes know, like Pearl Islands just has a massive place in my heart. It's amazing. It, 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 it'll, no, nothing will ever replace that because it was so pure and we were all just so naive about what's the yeah. tsunami that's going to be thrown at us. And yeah. we did everything we could to adjust and everyone does their own thing. And it was epic. It was an epic, epic season. Fair play, Sandra, Rupert, Burton, Trish, massive, big personalities, wonderful people. And you can't replace that. And, and now and the fans will tell you the fans always say Pearl Islands is in their top five, if not their favorite or their second favorite. But Pearl Islands is always in the top five. Always. 100%. What I don't understand, Sandra, you may have some insight in this, is when you have that that just across the border, around the world, Pearl Islands is in their top five. Why are they still going for the new shiny object? Right, yeah. the fire tokens and everything. Why don't you go back, pull it back a little bit, and focus on big personalities like Fairplay yeah. and Rupert and back the to because that's what makes the show. Wow. Like, yeah. You get the right personalities, you couple of twists here and there, blind sides, but the big personalities, the characters make the show. You don't need those bright, shiny objects, in my opinion. But I feel like I feel like as it's evolved, like going back and watching ours because I watched it like a month or so ago. 
It is so slow. And, and we're used to, I mean, imagine when we were on it, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't social media, you know, there weren't even smartphones. There wasn't any of that. And so no one had like ADD where you always had another thing to be watching. And I watch ours and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so, like even the music is slow. <laughs> and, and so it's like, we have like fans, like original fans have an appreciation, but if anyone's watched it over the last five or 10 years, they're getting used like, I mean, it, it's got to keep improving, improving from a it, attention span standpoint. I, I think it holds. And so if you up, took a step back, you'd risk just people just uh, it's boring. I, I think it holds up versus versus in Africa, which like I, I have my top three seasons: Pro Islands and in, in Africa. And I I think Africa that like you know Jeff isn't talking during challenges. There's this weird like. <laughs> like trippy music going on and stuff <laughs> like like I, I i think pro islands holds up better than there I, I than that i mean i just think just i think we were just so chock full of characters and you know and we had one of the first big twists in the history of survivor with the outcast yeah well, Johnny, you did my segue for me. I was going to bring that up as you were talking about hating the advantages and things that come with new school. I, I do as well. I'm right there with you. But I think that the outcast twist, Burton, you can speak to this, uh, was really successful in Pearl Island. Savage, you made it a little different. Greatly right? really successful. Uh, Burton, can you talk about, and Trish, when you guys, what you guys were told when you were voted off? I've never really heard a clear account of what it was like for the outcasts. Yeah, great Martin. question. Uh, it was it was awful, uh, and so my first thing is like I'll have a beer and food, and they're like no and no, and then I think it was we have good news and bad news, but you have to wait to hear it from a producer. So it's like so you're mad, you're angry, you just want something of comfort, and they know what you like, so they've got it there, and um, and they come then they finally a producer comes around and says okay, do you want the good news or bad news? It's like well, it can't be any more. Like, what more bad news could you get? Just whatever that is. Like, we're not going to get food or beer or whatever you want. You're like, okay, well, what could the good news be? And like, well, you're going to have another chance chance for a challenge after whatever, two more two more vote-offs. And then it, it, that just flipped it for me. I was like, well, I don't care what that's for. Any chance for anything for another challenge? And at that point, it's revenge. You know, I was so angry from a competitor standpoint. Um, like, I didn't care what it was for. But then, you know, out there, everyone's been voted off. Everyone's kind of in a bad mood. Um, you have, I, I, was, I didn't know the other people who had been voted off. So it was like this hodgepodge out there that, um, but it was like, we were the bad news bears. Like, we, every day, I was like, well, there's got to be a water challenge. Every other challenge has been water. So we're doing, like, literally, I'd swim out 50 yards. We're like, guys, swim out of here, swim down, pick up a rock and swim back. And like, you know, Ryan shoulders swims out. He can't go down. I'm like, dude, take your shoes off. You can, you can get down. And so it was like, I don't know, this was a weird bonding moment of, uh, of being out there. And then uh, oddly we get back and there, it wasn't a water challenge, but we did a lot of water challenge training. <laughs> and so I had a totally different experience from Burton because I was the last one voted off before the merge. So by the time I got there, I was pretty malnourished. I mean, they weighed me. I mean, they took, they snuffed out my torch. Somebody held my hand into like the jungle and put me on a scale. It was really weird. And I thought, oh, we're, I'm going to go to Argentina and we're going to go to a spa. <laughs> like, I thought I was getting ready to go to a hotel the next day. Like, you know, oh. And, um, and so I get on a scale and I'm like, what, this is weird. And it was like three o'clock in the morning when I got voted, you know, by the time they did the, uh, the, you know, challenge. And by the time they voted me off, it was really, really late at night and they weighed me. And then it was weird. I slept in the jungle. I, I was with a, some like PA and she goes, just lay down. The sun's going to be up in a little bit and I'll take you to the rest of the, other, other, um, you know, they didn't call us outcasts, the people that were voted off. And all I wanted to see was Burton and Michelle. I mean, I was just, cause I didn't vote either one of you guys off. So I just was waiting to see Burton and Michelle to let them know that I didn't actually write down their names. I didn't vote them off. So 
The next day, the sun was coming up and I got in this boat and it was so windy. And by the time I got to where you guys were, I just remember going, I'm starving. And I I go, where, where am I going? And they go, well, here's your rice. And they gave me this little thing of rice <laughs> and they gave me some water. I was filthy. And um, I weighed 102 pounds. I started the game at 122. And um, they go, okay, well, you're going to meet everybody. Everybody's going to be here. And about the middle of the day, I just wandered out. And I think, Burton, you were the first person I saw. And I was like, where are we? What's happening? And I don't think you guys told me about what was going on. Nobody told me. Well, I was only there a night with you guys before we went. Yeah, not much at all. Yeah. yeah. So I lost I more really weight in have... six days on that island than the first 12 days in the game. Wow. Because of the rice portions. And I asked him, I said, can I have a spear? And uh, and I'll cat, don't give me anything. Just give me a spear and I'll go fish. And they wouldn't do it. So for me, it was really tricky trying to get voted back on. Because if you think about it, I didn't have the bonding experience that Burton's talking about. Yeah, I, you were in a tough spot. I was spot. Really there 24 hours. And so Bert and Michelle are probably pissed at me, like, screw you, you know, you're one of the ones that brought us here. And I didn't know Nicole, and I didn't know Skinny Ryan, and I didn't know Lil. So the chances of me getting voted back on were slim to none, and I just was like, I am completely screwed here. Well, if you had been extra annoying, they would have, uh, you know, as far as, as far yeah, as the like boat, Lil the boat, was, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, like peek peek behind the curtain, you know, I, I you know, we'll, you know, we'll of course go get back to the the outcast twist. The the voting is Burton deserves to get back in the game, and Nicole and Michelle didn't want Lil to ruin their their post their, or their, their travels their, their, their pre jury trip. So this so is. Fair play. This is my favorite story. Please tell it because no <laughs> one has heard this story. Honestly, it's, as far as it's I, unbelievable. Yeah. it's so unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that it's that epic. simple. Epic. Yeah. So no, Bert, Burton deserved to get back in the game. One hundred percent, Burton. Stud yeah. Deserves yeah. So, to be in the so, game. so they they vote Burton, but but uh, Nicole and Michelle are just like this old lady cannot be any more annoying ever in the history of ever. She's going to ruin our pre jury trip. Welcome let's, to my let's, world. Let, let's put <laughs> votes on her to put her back into the game so she doesn't ruin our pre-jury trip. And that I was it. Yeah. So they don't have to, they don't have to hang that. out with her. Yeah. I knew that. And it wasn't, <laughs> it was Nicole. It yeah. wasn't Michelle. It was, it was both Nicole. of them. They both and, and they because Skinny me. Ryan threw a vote for Lil because he loved her. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> so but Burton was voted back in because... Yeah. I voted for Burton to go back in and it was clear that we wanted an outcast to win the whole thing. And we knew that Burton would have the best chance at winning the challenges. I, the only thing that I regret, and of course we all have regrets and stuff, but the one thing over the 20 years or whatever that I've looked back on that I wish I had done differently was I was the very first person that, Jeff called on to make my case to be voted back in. And so I didn't have the experience of listening to what other people said. And I I don't even remember what I said, but it was some kind of mamsy pamsy thing. But what I should have said was, uh, you should vote me back in because I just got voted out and I know exactly what's going on in the game. I know exactly. Uh, no, you, you should have said, "I'll ruin your trip more than this this other lady." <laughs> <laughs> that was the correct answer. Right. So, so you've had seventeen years. You still would have got it wrong. <laughs> that's, that, that's the only correct answer, apparently. <laughs> so, so, so let's let's go to 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 the moment, uh, Zach. Bring us in. They come around the corner. Andrew Savage. <laughs> come on. Come on. I, and so here's the thing, right? So it was day 20 or whatever. And, you know, the, the fans need to understand when you get to that, and Sandra knows this better than anyone. When you get to that point, you've given everything you possibly can. So every day matters. And, and you've allocated so many resources internally, mentally to getting that next day, that next day. So when I see the outcast coming and that they get a chance to get back in the, in the game, it was the most 
surreal and absurd thing I've ever heard, ever seen, ever heard. The folks we voted out, and I said this on the show, they 100% deserve to be voted out. They had no right to be back in the game. And for Survivor, from a concept standpoint, to let them have an opportunity to get back in the game, total BS. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say that to Mark Burnett to his face. Total BS. And they had no right for the opportunity to get back in the game. They didn't earn it. They were out of the game. Burden, you're, I, I'll be tell you as a brother, you're an exception because uh, you deserve to be back in the game. But anyway, so when I, when I saw that uh, disbelief, and it just took a chunk out of me because the effort to, to overcome this obstacle uh, was overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you when we were tra- we're doing our little training. So people are like, maybe we get back in, maybe we get a million dollars. Like, okay, those are just that stupid talk. And finally, I, you can kind of be I could be honest out there. I didn't have to like worry about getting voted out. Like, let's not be stupid about what we might be able to win. Let's just get out there and try to win, whatever it is. Who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. These people voted us out. Let's go out. This is our only chance of vengeance. And I could not believe when Jeff said there is a chance to get back in. Now, what would have been really an awful twist is if we lost to both tribes, <laughs> then it just would have fallen flat on its face. Like, okay, let's you know, go and just cut that whole part out of the, the season. You, what, you, you saw you the, know what is so funny? the chance of you beating us was was minimal. Like, there's no way you're going to – we haven't eaten in three days or whatever. We're a misfit. Like, we, we, <laughs> we had nothing. We had no coordination. Actually, so here's – this is interesting, not to take up valuable time but dara in that challenge i don't know if you folks know this but dara in that challenge ate a bad oyster uh that that early morning and she went white right and her pulse she almost died in that actual challenge we had the medics come over and they were taking her pulse and and it was super substandard and mark burnett (laughs) eating his subway sandwich says get her up and I said, Mark, like she's in serious trouble here. He said, get her up. She's delaying the production of this challenge. So they got her up. And if you look closely at that challenge, Dara is propped up in the cage, absolutely gray, and does absolutely nothing because she almost died because of food poisoning from one or two. Uh, yeah, rocks. she was tied up, right? What's she that? She was tied up in there. She's she was tied up in the cage. And she just went and, and yeah. <laughs> you know what was interesting? So we wanted to win that challenge so badly for redemption to your point, Savage, to to show for us on our point of view, we wanted to show it was bullshit that we got voted out of the game, that 100%. we should have never gotten voted out of the game. And so we wanted to show you guys that, yeah, you know what? We are going to kick your ass. We're going to show <laughs> you we should have never gotten voted out of the game. So the, the drive for us, I mean, it was, yes, we all wanted to get back in, but the, but the challenge for me, it was the most fun challenge of my whole experience because the, the, just the energy and the drive to show that we should have never been voted out. So we were looking at it from an opposite point of view from yeah. how you were looking at it. But I remember Burton, I had to crawl under, Burton he came to me, I had to crawl, dig, dig, dig and crawl under. And I remember as Burton was running, Probst turned to me and he said, all right, Trish Dunn, you make sure the outcast win. Make because sure what? The outcast win. Okay. Because not that I was going to make them win, but his point was, how wonderful for production if the outcast actually won, which was the whole point of them bringing us back to show that. So they and, had a lot riding on us winning that challenge. And to be clear, when I said nobody in the outcast deserved to get back in the game, I'm talking about the Morgans. I don't know about the Drakes. You know, Burton, you're amazing. But I was talking about Skinny Ryan and Lil, Nicole. From my perspective, leading the tribe, they had no right to be back in the game, no right to have an option to get back in the game. So I don't want to cast dispersions about the Drake uh, outcasts. Well, I, I understood what you said. I knew what you meant. That's right. <laughs> Thank we, you. We, 
when they rounded the corner and, and I saw the twist, like you look, I have a smile on my face because I'm not thinking about Morgan. I'm not thinking about Drake. I'm not thinking about Johnny Fairplay's personal game. I'm thinking this is great fucking TV and I'm on a season that fucking includes this. And that's all I care. Like my, my, you can, you can ask, you know, Trish Burton and, and, and Sandra who talked with me out there on a deal. I was always thinking television. It was television, 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 television. Tunnel vision on television. I wanted to make the great, like, you know, no one had been a bad guy before. I'm like, I want to be a bad guy. I want to make great. I see them around the corner. I'm like, this is great television. It's all I care about. And then I saw somebody on a, a social media the other day. They're just like, you know, uh, Drake really dropped the ball. They should have had fair play run again uh, instead of Sean on, on the relay thing. And, I, and I'm just like, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm like, what? When when Jeff told us the challenge, Rupert pulled pulled the Drake aside. He goes, "We've got to beat them." And I and I look at Rupert. I'm like, "We ain't winning." Did you <laughs> see? Did you see the look on Burton's face? Yeah. Burton is single handedly <laughs> winning this <laughs> fucking challenge. <laughs> and, and, and Rupert and Rupert goes, "Well, with an attitude like that, we're not gonna win." I'm like, "No, with Burton, we're not gonna win." <laughs> The challenge is over before we start. <laughs> I agree. So when we when when me and Sean and Burton took off with our flags, and Burton was like, you know, the the greatest sprinter in the history of the world. <laughs> and I, well, dude. Well, wait a minute. So leading up to it, all I know is you're a runner. Your calves are about this big. Yeah. I'm like, this is gonna fucking suck. And. Uh, <laughs> And I look down at I look down at my heart. I could literally see my heart like beating out of my sure. chest. Yeah. And Jeff's like, "How are you guys doing?" I'm like, "I'm I'm shit. My pants are in." Right and um, so, and so if I had run, thank goodness you stumbled. I thank goodness you stumbled, Savage. It's a burden. I stumbled, and then Probst looked. He thought that you or Sean tripped me, and it was just my. I was just an idiot. I stumbled on my own. But he's looking like, was that a a, a rule violation? And no, I was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so Burton, if I if I had run instead of Sean, you think I would I probably would have taken you? That would it would have been <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think okay. So. You, you, same outcome. Yeah, probably. Okay, that's that's that's, that's that's what I so, stuck with. So a, a tiny funny story about that challenge. Um, so there was a little bit of the controversy with um, Lil used like a bandana or something for a rope or whatever. Yep, I was you in Park City it. after the fact. Hmm. Huge controversy. Can you yes. talk about that? Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'll tell you. So I didn't think anything of it because I tied everything with the twine they gave us. Lil's dots were horrible anyway. And and so they all had to be retied. So I was in Park City running to Sean, who yes. we were up there for Sundance. His, I'm talking to his family. I can't remember his mom or his dad. I can't remember like, that. You know, you know, you know, Burton, uh, you cheated in that challenge. I'm like, <laughs> like, dude, like, I'm up here this for like Sundance. Three years later. <laughs> oh, Ed, that's Sean's dad for sure. I'm like, <laughs> I'm up here for Sundance with buddies. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, come here, come here. And I think his dad's gonna give me like a tour. They have a really cool like ski lodge. I'm like, oh cool. I'd love to check these out. So we go down their theater room. It's like huge, huge TV the size of a wall. He's got it on pause. <laughs> that challenge. For, like and he's like, watch this. What he pushes play goes through. And he's like, you cheated right there. And I'm like, dude. First off, can I? Have a, I wasn't tying with that stuff. I'm like, second off, there's 60 cameras on these things. There's a lot of people watching. I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, no, 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 get back, get back. And, and replays it multiple times. Like, oh my lord. Um, so I listen. I, I, from what I remember, I didn't use any of those those tying bandanas or whatever. Um, and I believe everyone that Lil tied literally did not work uh, effectively. Things had to be retied. So. Are you trying to tell me her scalp knots were not up to uh... <laughs> <laughs> There are a few things of her scout certifications that were quite up to snuff. <laughs> well, I can't help but see the controversy around the outcast twist linked to the edge of extinction. Uh, Sandra, can you compare what the Outcast twist is like to the Edge of Extinction? 
I hated the outcast twist then and I hated Edge of Extinction because I felt it was <laughs> similar, although the out the Edge of Extinction is just a twist and the outcasts, you know, they were coming in early in the game where the Edge of Extinction is someone getting in and hopefully winning at the end. But I hated them both. Like I don't know, I just I can't to talk too much about Edge of Extinction since sure, it's right, still on right, TV right, right now. Um but you I hate looked the- pretty pumped and when you showed up on that beach. Scared. I was like, please, Burton, don't come back in. And it ended up being Burton. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, Burton is going to come in here pissed off. He's going to wipe us out like anybody but Burton. I was so scared. Yeah, they they they, they showed that clip on, on the show. Sandra saying anybody but Burton, but what they don't show, and, and it, it's my, it was my favorite line out of 30, my 38 days, uh, Sandra, I think you had what, 39? I don't, I, I couldn't keep track, but, but when, when Burton does come back, it's in the middle of the night, like, you know, Savage, you guys have the, the welcoming committee for Lil, which yeah. not so much. So <laughs> Conversely, well. on the Drake try, we're just like, let's just go to bed. Like, you know, wh- whoever it is, you know, they'll, 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 they'll They'll get here. They'll they'll figure it out. Whatever. So Burton shows up. You know, later than 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 Lua showed up with you guys. We're we're asleep, and Burton's like, uh, "Hey," and uh, Sandra goes, <laughs> "We asleep. Just go to bed. We'll talk to you. To, we ain't trying to talk to you right now. It'll that that'll happen. To, like we're done." And so and Burton's like, uh, "Okay," <laughs> and he's like, "Well, where do I sleep?" And I go right here, and I'm so happy because it's my friend Burton. And Burton goes <laughs> right beside the snake that voted me out. <laughs> and I go, "How you been, buddy?" <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was the worst my case. In, um, I have a couple of episodes saying, or, 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 uh, "Savage," and I watched this when you guys picked Rupert to go on that, and and I think I've talked to Rhino about this. Yeah. I was in the back of that boat and I wanted so badly to start waving my hand. Uh, I, I saw the writing on the wall a tiny bit of the Drake tribe. Um, and I was like, oh my God, please pick me. And had y'all have picked me, I mean, I can't even imagine how, how it would have changed because I wouldn't have gone back. I don't no, it's think. a great, great comment, Burton. So we, I have, I've thought about that. And in talking about dramatically changing not only the uh, – the uh, complexion of a season, but the complexion of the entire Survivor uh, franchise. Franchise. I mean, you yeah. think about so. In, in, in hindsight, should have absolutely taken Burton, hundred yeah. percent. But Rupert had, you know, he's the pirate and all that stuff. My bad. If we had taken Burton, and, and we talked about this, oh my gosh, Burton gets. And then let's just fantasize. To me, Burton gets back in the game and comes to the Morgans versus Lil. And let's yeah. say Lil goes to the Drakes. What a dramatically different season. Yeah. And, not, and what, what's fascinating about that is because it's the domino effect. For, for oh, a so, yeah, yeah, butterfly yeah. effect. Huge. What, what yeah. happened? Right? I, I, I don't necessarily think that makes that big a difference. Okay, so if, if Burton goes with you guys, Lil ends up with us. Lil's with us. Burton's with you guys. That's a stalemate. Five five, or you know, whatever whatever the numbers are at the merge. That that's an even split. But on on the 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 challenge that I throw that that sends Burton out in the first place. If you had cha- if you had chosen, yeah, because I would have gotten out. Yeah, if you had chosen Burton then instead of Rupert, Burton would have stayed with you guys. Yeah. And also, we could have done something even huger in the game at that point when. <laughs> Like, 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 say, say you didn't choose Burton and you chose Rupert just like you did. Bur- Rupert had the option to stay with you guys or come back to Drake, and Rupert comes back to Drake. Then he follows that. And I don't even know, I don't even think they show this on television. He, uh, Jeff goes, if anyone else wants to, to jump, jump ship, yeah. make your plea. And so he goes, he asks, uh, he asks, I can't remember if he asked you first or me first. I think he asked you first, Savage, and you go, anyone that comes here, you're the next person to go home. And then, and they're like, all right, Johnny, as a representative for Jake, or Drake, you know, what, and I'm just like, open arms, come on. And what, what, what instead of that, what I, I mean, you totally shit the bed on your answer, Savage, <laughs> but, but, but I, I equally shit the bed in that I should have said, let's force the merge. If you guys come right now, we set the merge 
there's no outcast twist. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So look, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a incredibly loyal person to a fault, and and so I totally shit the bed. I I, I own that. I will always own that. Uh, yeah, that I mean, I I. I you know, as, as the leader of a tribe, I, you know, I, I, I'm not faulting you, but but we collectively both screwed up in our own individual ways. You, yours, yours via pride, mine, you know, being, you know, not not thinking, you know, four steps ahead, which I was trying to do my entire time out there. But forcing the merge, there's no outcast twist. Yes. Well, Savage, they wouldn't allow ask you, how, I don't know how you really got voted off. I remember that... You were the last outcast. I mean, you were the last one to come. And I remember um, you were walking down the dock and we were all up on the hill because we didn't know who that person was going to be. We thought it was going to be Sean, to tell you the truth. Well, Sean was already, it was you and Sean. No, 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 no. How did that Sean got voted out. And then Savage, how did you get voted out to join to join the? Join so there, us? There's that uh, little piss ant there called Fair Play. Yeah, so that's how I got voted out. What happened? I, 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 get that. I as as much as I want to take credit for your boot, Savage, and and I would love to. Uh, I I would that one I would have to give uh, the honor to to Lil Morris. Well, right. Wait, so, Savage, who got fair. voted out when Lil came in? Yeah. Yes. So this, Lil came back and then we had the merge. Oh, that's right. Then, then it was yeah. the merge. That's yeah. right. It Lil, merge. Lil jumped ship. I, I talked to Lil, Lil and, and Rupert talked to Lil. And, and, Lil was and, a and scorned, you, scorned woman. She thought that I voted her out. I didn't I actually argue with OT and my alliance to keep her because I didn't want to have to make fire and she was great at making fire. And they said, <laughs> no, we're not getting rid of, of Dara because Rhino uh, had a crush on Dara. Yeah. So we said, no, we're keeping Dara and Lil's, Lil's out. So that's fine. And here's the thing about this whole absolute BS and nonsense about it. I didn't tell there's a this poignant scene where, well, uh, at the, after the merge, when I knew my head was on the chopping block, and I said, well, will you, to Lil, will you tell me if, uh, if I'm the one that's going to get voted out? She said, well, did you tell me, you know, before I got voted out? And I absolutely did. I told her, Lil, you're going home. You know what she did? She took the firewood and the matches, put them under the shelter, and said, Savage, there they are. I know I'm going home. And there's this fallacy of that we didn't tell her. So she just created this insane, which is not unusual for Lil, this insane dialogue. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so, so there's that. I don't care about that, honestly. Uh, missteps in the season, absolutely. But, uh, but absolutely beloved season. And I wouldn't change anything, you know. But here's the thing. How, how super fun would it be? Not that it's going to happen. My younger daughter just brought me a refill, which is super cool. If how only about? we had a time machine, right? If only we had a time machine. Well, no. I, well, I, I, I think Savage is going a better direction than that. I'm going a better direction. Yep. How cool would it be? Not that it would ever happen, but in my mind, in my fantasy. So take Pearl Island's cast, one of the top five ever, and say, you know what? Let's do it again. Yeah. yeah. Wait, look, Survivor is the greatest social experiment on TV, 100%. So let's take it to the next level, get everyone together. Everyone's still healthy. Everyone's still reasonably young. Oh, and would let's never, um, uh, Skinny Ryan would never come. So we just lost two people right there. Well, who, 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 did, who was the first one? Sandra? OT Austin. He, I don't no, think he. Oh, so OT's a very close friend of mine. So my, my question to the queen. Is would you sign up? So here's the thing. And no, I, I'm retired, like, I, I'm, and I'm too old for this shit. But uh, okay, you just did here, it. You just did it, Sandra. I, no, I, I, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you one. One better example of what, like, we, we talked about this on on the uh, the the Patreon Q and A the the other week, throwing out scenario. So going into season forty one, we haven't filmed yet, right? You know, we have the coronavirus. We have the quarantine. So for Wednesday nights, starting in September, if we don't have a season on 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 cue ready to go, Wednesday nights do a Survivor rewatch. A Survivor re pick one season and, and put it to a fan vote. You know, I think Pro Islands will be in in that mix of one of the you know the greatest seasons. Ever. So you do a revote or a rewatch. So. September 18th or, you know, whatever that Wednesday night, that's, you know, the first episode of, of season seven, episode one. 
We go all the way to December. And, and that's what they show on Wednesday nights, right? Because they don't have new footage. In the meantime, the quarantine's coming down. They take those 16 people and they they film. They're like, like you've it, America's been reintroduced to that cast. In February, you see that 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 season replayed with new people. That'd with, be with, so with, fun. With the, That'd how be awesome so is fun. that? And, and it doesn't do it a I, second. Honestly, it doesn't have Andrew, to be broad. You don't do it. It, it, it. It could be Survivor Africa. It could be. It could be. It could be whatever <laughs> season that America. But you know, put it to a vote or or pick. Per Sandra, Island. I would prefer Per Islands. If they were to do it. that, Sandra, if, if if every Wednesday night they show an episode of Per Islands. And they lift the the, the the quarantine, and you were able to film season forty. What, what would you know be forty two? You know, technically, because Perons would be re aired for forty one. Would you do a forty two re a, a Perons reboot for forty two? You would. You would. Yeah. You would be there with us again. Smile. So my my experience. You would be there with us. Sandra, keeping it real. My experience is. Uh, this is in my life, professional life, money talks. So this is about, for, from my perspective, it's about money. So I know you've, you've won twice and that's wonderful and, and you are the queen, but is there a dollar amount? Not that you have to disclose it, but if, if Probst would say and Burnett would say to the 16 original cast members, you know, <laughs> not going to give me any money. I'll do it again in a heartbeat. Burton would probably sign up. They would say yeah, to you, get, you, get, you get a million bucks or whatever. And 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 but we need all sixteen, or else it's not a pure. It has to be all replay. sixteen. It has to be a pure replay, right? If well, everybody else was on board, I'd definitely do it. But there's certain. Yeah, people that oh, no there you go. She's on. She, she doesn't no money. She's on. Right, Let's <laughs> do it. And the crazy Dude, good job, Savage. I'd, you work on. Guys, I'd be one of the first one gone, and as long as they guarantee me a good vacation like the one I had in Australia, <laughs> I'm there. no. One hundred percent, Sandra. What I love is that you always bring your A game, though. So it, yeah, the uh, money, the guarantee is great, but you always be Sandra. You be spicy. You be the. Queen. I don't think you're an early boot. I I I think if if you had done Pearl Islands and Heroes Villains, and you had not done anything else, and you had just won two seasons, two million dollars, your target's pretty big. We've we've seen Sandra chill a little bit on 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 uh, on, on game changes. You're you're back. You're one of us. It's okay. We, you're not you're not the first boot. You're not an early boot. You can hang around. We like you, Sand. You got friends. I would not protect you, hundred percent. There you go. You like right. You have an alliance right here. Zach Zach's even in your alliance. He's like, don't say that stuff. Because if it ever happens, they put this foot in there. Like you would make the merge. If I had anything to say about it, you would make the merge. <laughs> There we go. Uh, do, do you guys think it's? I mean, as I said, if if they don't have a season first. forty-one to do, replay a season Wednesday nights. An epic season. Well, replay Pearl Islands. I don't want them replaying another season. I want them replaying our season. Well, I gave them the idea. Let's go. <laughs> so let's just do this one. We don't put it to a fan vote. We just make it Pearl yeah. Islands, and then when they lift the quarantine in November, we start filming, and shit's ready in February. Love it. There you go. I think yeah. it's a great pitch. So. All right, guys. I'm gonna say good night. Yeah, me too. You guys take care. <laughs> good okay? to see you, everybody. Good hey, to see you, Sam. Honestly, see you. super I'll fun. I'll see you guys on Facebook. We will. Yeah. Oh yeah, Zach. You have you have a couple questions to lead us out as they take off. Uh yeah, sure. Um, let me see where to go with this. Um, basically, I think you guys have covered it on how Pearl Islands holds up as a season. I think it's beloved by fans and just. You guys made my job easy hosting this tonight because you all came with such good answers and so many stories. I think that speaks to the Pearl Islands cast. Um, I guess my last question would be, who from your season who hasn't come back should come back for a second chance? Trish. No, but- <laughs> 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 Trish. Trish. I think she should Trish come back. I, I would I would love Johnny Fairplay to play a second time. I haven't seen well, that yet. Who hasn't? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He hasn't yet. <laughs> uh, so. I would say Trish and Burton for sure. So yeah. I think play, if the season broke Fairplay, you know I'm a fan. Fairplay, you know I'm a fan. I'd love to see you play again. You deserve it. And uh, not my call, unfortunately. But Thank Savage, you. I, I, I'd like to play the next time I play. 
<laughs> Savage, before we leave, I just have one thing I want to tell you. I watched the season that you came back on. You played such a great game. I mean, I know you you got voted off much earlier than you thought you should have, and I, I agree. But I really watched how you played that game. I really watched the decisions and the alliances and the relationships that you had. You did a beautiful, beautiful job. I just I've been wanting to let you know that you did a great job. Thank you, Trish. Uh, appreciate that. Gave it everything I had, and uh, you know. <laughs> it was not my fate to go further than uh, than I did, and it hurt. But I I I, I love the sentiment. Thank you, my dear. Yeah. Thank you. You did a good job, dude. I just I just looked up. I forgot how far exactly you made it on the second time. But twenty one days both times, huh? It's a curse, man. It is. Uh, it's, well, it's an curse. Hey, it's it's better than anything under twenty one. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Savage actually called me before he went out there for, I did. for advice. I did. And I, and folks know that. And they're like, what? Whoa, Savage is talking to fair play. That cats are sleeping with dogs. That's crazy. <laughs> no, I, I said, hold on. Fair play is an actual friend of mine. And like, what? They can't possibly be. It's like, no, actually it is. In the, in the game, we, you know, mortal enemies outside. He's actually a decent guy. And like, what? No way. <laughs> Same here. As I said, I, I, I sized you up before pre day one and you know if you're on my tribe you know bert burton uh burton's the enemy on the other tribe <laughs> <laughs> well and so, so I gotta, I gotta drop you guys yeah, honestly burton trish fair play love seeing you guys we, we should do this again i i can yeah i can rally the morgans they're kind of lame but let, let's do this when we get i talked to i've seen tawana and talked to her i talked to rhino yeah We'll make it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do more. Okay. I mean, as I said, the, the quarantine's not going anywhere. I I I thought I, I have Dave Matthews tickets for June twenty third, and they they bumped it to June uh, to July twenty third. I was like, oh, awesome! I didn't read the next letter. Twenty one. They bumped it for to one year from now. So <laughs> quarantine might not quite be over as quickly as I thought. <laughs> That's, That's funny. funny. All right, love you guys. I got a job. Right. Good Bye. to see you guys. See you, Savage. Good to see you. Take care. See you. Fair play, Zach. Thank you. See you. It's nice to meet you. Bye, guys. Did you, Thanks, did you add something, Burton? Burton? Good to see did, you, honey. You look did you, great. Did you have one thing to add, Burton? Well, no. The only thing I was going to say is imagine if we lost that first challenge. Talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. Is, yeah. We, we lose that first that challenge. Band. Sandra Diaz Twine is the first boot. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's I, not we we're stuck in that sand, and it was miraculous that we got around them. I, I and I didn't. I forgot how close it was. It was yeah. that was a great first. That was a great challenge. I mean, that was so exciting. That that the finish of that first challenge is in the top three moments of my entire life ever. Like like I have I have my daughters, and and the very end of that first challenge. That was I have, I've never been, I've never felt more like I, I, I laughed, I cried, I screamed. Like I've never in my entire life as a human being felt more what love is than, than that crossing them in that, in that last few seconds ever. Well, like Trish, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's just the, like a uh, Drake tribe. So they're like, who wants to go scout it out? And I was like, all right, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. I'm like, don't like stand up. And, J and Fairbanks like, oh, I'll go do it. And he comes back. He's like, dude, course is not that long. It's not that bad. It's like a couple hundred yards, maybe a hundred yards. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know measurements. You know me. You know me, girls. I told this was twelve inches. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm. When we're like, I'm going all out, like, this is a hundred yard dash with a cannon. <laughs> and I just remember a couple of turns, like, Fairbly, where is his finish line? Like, dude, you I said know. it's not very far. It's ridiculous. It took us like, hours. Right up there, right up there. I'm like, I was so mad. It took us like <laughs> six and a half hours, that challenge. People don't realize how long no, it was. Ever. It took forever. And you know what? If you look at that again, John, you're not going to realize this, but it's, I've only watched our season twice in 20 years, but you almost killed me. 
And you probably don't realize. Oh, yeah. No, I do. When I threw that. The rock? Yeah. I threw the rock. Zach, we were, if you go back to that first challenge, we had to clear a path to drag this cannon, this 1700, you know, circa cannon. But we're throwing the rocks behind us. This huge boulder. And he wasn't looking. And he just goes like that. And I go like this. And I pull back that that huge rock nearly hit the side of my head. I mean, Did he kill you? Yeah, I oh. played that in slow motion for Leo and it was so crazy. I went like this and the rock went just past my nose. Barely missed, barely missed. Barely so. missed the side of my head. I mean, and I remember like it was yesterday. I remember seeing the rock out of the corner of my eye, this huge big rock. And I remember, I remember just going like this and it went right past the front of my head. Well, well, the the best word is so you say it's like a hundred. You know, I you say I claim it's a hundred yards, Burton. I go back for fans versus favorites, and the the first immunity challenge is a replica of our first challenge, and and I they come there they're like you know, uh, Probst goes fair play. You might recognize this, and and you know, and so he does a thing, and I'm just like. I'm looking, yeah. and, and 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 then like uh, uh I'm like and and then you know then we you know TV timeout you know they, and and so production's like fair play what do you think and I'm just like this is like a fucking Nickelodeon fucking version of the <laughs> I'm just like like I can see that like basically it's from where I am at my desk right now to the other side of my my game room right now and like like I saw the finish line from right from, from where I was I'm just like. No, this isn't like the first challenge on Pearl Islands at all. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, it's an hour but later. We were we were, if if they didn't because we got stuck at that deep sand, they passed us, and then if they went two feet to the side, they would have won. So yeah. you think about talk about the butterfly effect or whatever of Survivor. Yeah, if we lost that. I don't know. Who do you think would have been voted off? Sandra's first boot. No problem. No, abs. One hundred percent. I mean, can you? All right. So Trish, you're locked in with me at this point. Burton thinks he's locked in with me. Burton, are you? Are you worried about me, or is or is Sandra your first boot as well? You keep the you keep the tribe as strong as possible yeah. for challenges. Yeah. Because back then it wasn't strategy, and it, the first vote wasn't strategy as much as like winning challenges. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Burton, I remember, John, I don't know if you remember this, but we had just come back from the village and we were on the boat and John and I hooked up real quick. I don't yeah. know. I don't even remember how that happened. You're my T-bird. It was very tight right from the beginning with John and I. Yeah. And we got to our island, the Drake Island, and we were coming off the boat on the sand. And John turned to me and he said, um, Hey man, you got to be careful. There's there are there's a knife in your back, and I go, wait, what? I don't even know anybody. What? Are you, oh my god, what are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, Burton and Sean, and maybe you said Michelle, but it was definitely Burton and Sean. They think you're too old because you're the oldest one. And I told Burton, like, no man, Trish is cool. She's totally cool. Cool. Well, I had run 24 marathons before that, uh, before Survivor, but I didn't want For anybody sure. to know that yet. I didn't want anybody to know how. But you, 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 you spilled that after that. And I spilled <laughs> it right. And I freaking spilled the beans. I'm like, I remember, and I remember I hearing that. Yeah. These yeah. challenges. I was 42, and I remember going. God, I don't want to be the first one voted off just because they think I'm older and I'm not in good shape or something. So I did. That was a strategy that blew. It just blew away when when he told me that. Yeah. Well, that was a smart. I mean, like that's good information to have. I'm, like you think it could work against you? Not not 2003 Survivor. That that's that's not being used against you. But Burton, when you heard that I was a runner, did it make you? pause about my age and think that I could help with the challenges more? Well, I was never... Well, so if we're talking about the first vote, there's, you weren't even on the radar, right? No. If, if, you, if we're keeping the, keeping the tribe strong... No, I mean like early not, on, even before, even before we... Even the, 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 conver- the conversation that I... I, did, been, I never wanted you off. For me, it was always... Keep the tribe strong, and we have to get rid of the the weak links from yeah. a, a challenge, strictly challenge standpoint. 
And then as things kept going, I think Krista and I, I haven't seen that many episodes. I, mean, I think Krista and I started butting heads when she was asking me if I even went to school and stuff. And it's uh, like, yeah. we're not even allowed because we keep winning everything. No one is even at risk. So everyone's yeah. just kind of, yeah. we're in this super comfort. That's why I was like, we need to lose. We need to yeah, lose. But, so but, if we would have lost the first challenge, Sandra would have gone. Yeah. To keep but, the drive strong. The the cover the conversation you're talking about Trish w- was between uh, myself Sean and Burton and that that was uh, more Sean than Burton as as far oh. as targeting targeting you. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, because uh, Chris at one point Krista and I were just button heads and I was like she's I got just don't want her on the beach like let's get rid of her. But Burton, the person that masterminded your vote off was Rupert. He was the person that masterminded that because Rupert was jealous of you because you were catching fish. And Rupert wanted well, to be the yeah. one to catch fish and be the hero. And so Rupert yeah. convinced everybody that if you stayed on when we merged, then you would just win everything like um, Colby did in Australia. Yeah. Well, so he started hold on, hold on. That, freaking that, people out. That was Rupert. My plan was to play the second half of the game first. And I was... The first available between Burton and Rupert was my target. I didn't care which one it was, but I was going after one, one of one of those two. That's who I was going. Well, and I, and I mean, I'll jump back to Rupert real fast. I had pitched Rupert at one point. I'm like, let's have a, a let's have two alliances going: a Drake Alliance and a Strong and Challenges Alliance. Yeah, and let's go back and forth. Well, but you said you said let's, Strong Male Alliance, and he didn't like that. Well, maybe that's it. Yeah. But I, I mean, the same, same point. Strong and actually, you know what I said? Yes, strong male alliance who are likely to get voted off later. Yeah. So it's not about the males; it's about who's going to be the biggest target. Sure. Right. The, the, yeah. The 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 challenge target. You know. If you look on paper, Trish is a bigger target running forty two marathons. But if you in the game a survivor at that point. It's the perceived threat versus a real threat physically, right? Right. right. I mean, Dara, right. at the end, people kept trying to put me off, and Dara had won like three, two or three immunities. I'm like, she's winning the immunity. It's like, yeah, man. yeah. It's a, so it's and a who perceived would have thought? threat. Yeah. Who would have thought? So but, yeah. but Burton, I think the big mistake that you made early on with us, and I even said this in the show, was. You aligned yourself with Michelle and Sean and formed a nut, like a little clique going on. And it was yeah. with the with the five of us, it was perceived as being kind of elitist and off on yourselves. Sure. And I remember like literally in the show, I when on my one of my interviews, I said they need to be careful because they are alienating themselves with the rest of the five of us. And you guys yeah. start that really early and people, you had, tar- the three of you had targets on your backs real early on. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, being out there, uh, I was out there having fun. I was, I was working hard and I was having fun. I was around, you know, Sean was always kind of around me and Michelle was. So I think I, w- I would flip it over to you and say, why? Why were you judging us for hanging out together versus saying why you were alienating people? If I'm building a try, if I'm helping to build the shelter where I'm catching fish or I'm doing whatever, if I'm having fun, that doesn't mean I'm alienating, alienating anyone else intentionally. Well, it's all it, perception. Well, yeah, exactly. It's all right. perception. Yeah. So our perception was, I mean, you know, you guys were kind of, yeah. it, it, it felt Chris like. Chris is saying the jock thing, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 Rupert's no. crying I, because I, I said you have a skirt off. Yeah. Well, me, I mean, but, but you look you look early, like like the, those three early targets of, of, of Burton, Michelle, and Sean, you know, fast forward eight days later, and you and I are also looking at, at the, the trio of, of Rupert, Krista, and Sandra. Right. So we're the two that that are talking with 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 Rupert and them, but we're also talking with with uh, Burton and and yeah. Sean and them. So yeah. we, we had we had our pick. I mean, like you know, I, I understand the early alienation there, but I, I felt that those those two trios were there, 
And the fact that we were a solid two, we actually had more power than either of those three. Yeah, because we could pivot. We, we, we could pivot we pick to which whichever one. trio. Yeah. But Burton was so threatened by you. I mean, uh, Rupert was so threatened by you, Burton, that your little trio of you, Sean, and Michelle alienated him so badly. Yeah, and, and also, that was just... Huh? And, and, and that's just, from my standpoint, that's just naivety of why would someone be threatened by that if I'm just being out. friends or friendly with Well, because when he, when he wore a skirt, Sean started teasing him about wearing a skirt and whatever. I mean, what guy know. doesn't do that on any athletic I team? I know, but you're right. It's all perception more than anything else. I don't think Rupert was yeah. on many athletic teams. Did anyone read Rupert's book? What book? What I might have book? it. Yeah. I, did I, did I give book? you a way? <laughs> I've got it right here. Yeah. What is it? R- Rupert. Can you see that? Rupert, just, just being me. Just being oh, me. God. It is the greatest book ever. So, so like, there's like 10 blank pages in the middle, and it says my island adventure. And he goes, maybe one day I'll be able to tell the story. Cause when I wrote this book, there wasn't anything such. There wasn't such thing as a podcast. <laughs> that part's not there. But it, but the entire book is people that screwed over Rupert before Survivor. Oh God! <laughs> it's like I worked at this job, and this guy told me he'd pay me two hundred dollars to build a deck, and he only gave me a hundred. So Richard Smith, you're an asshole. <laughs> But that's pretty much the entire book. It's the greatest thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. This has been so much fun. It's been my honor. Again, if you were listening to the podcast and want to see the video feed, go to youtube.com slash Survivor NSFW. Burton, Trish, Johnny, this has been a blast. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. See you guys. See you guys. Woo.